Welcome to the History of Africa on NNC. I'm your host, Andy Lang. Our first segment is a live interview with Cody. Now over to Justin Dunkel. Good evening, Cody. Good evening. So, describe to me what you're doing in Africa. I am a spiritual medium, leading an army of children to help purify the Akali people. I speak the word of God to the people of Uganda. Who are these Akali people? A tiny ethnic group in northern Uganda who are primarily Roman Catholic. Why haven't you been caught yet? I'm in hiding, and no one knows my location. Interesting. How big is your army? Well, right now my army consists of 100,000 children. 100,000 children? You have children in your army? How'd you manage to do that? I eliminate their parents because that's what God told me to do. And I take their children as my own, and I will use them to make Uganda into a theocracy. That's very interesting. But isn't that looked down upon by most people? Yes, that's why I'm in hiding. Well, then how do you stay in touch with the people? Facebook, obviously. But this Coney 2012 page is going to be the end of me. Ugh, another like on that stupid page. I swear this is going to be the end. Well, I hope we find you soon. Now back to Andy in the studio. Thanks, Dunkle. As surprising as it may sound, other things have happened in Africa besides Cody. Now over to our specialist on Desmond Tutu. Ha! Found you, stupid Waldo. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I'm Ryan Plum, and I'm here to talk to you about Desmond Tutu. You may know me from my popular website that has over 10,000 views. Desmond Tutu was born October 7th, 1931. Woohoo! He was born in Clerkstorp, Transvaal. Desmond Tutu was enthroned as an Anglican bishop on September 7th, 1986. Desmond Tutu was a South African activist who defended human rights. He was famous for opposing apartheid and contributed to its demise. Plumtastic! He has campaigned to fight AIDS, transphobia, homophobia, poverty, homophobia, tuberculosis, transphobia, transphobia, homophobia. His reign ended in 1996. Houston, we have liftoff. To infinity and beyond. Thanks, Professor Plum. Now over to James Treskoloski with the Rubik's Senator who is summoning Nelson Mandela. It's activated. Storm clouds gather from every direction. Northwest, east, and south. Arise, Nelson Mandela. <laughs> We're here with Nelson Mandela. Nelson, it's a pleasure to finally meet you. Thanks, yes it is. Before we start, how about you tell me a little something about yourself? Well, I was born in Transkei, South Africa, on July 18th, 1980. My father, Gadla von Kaiswa, was the chief of the Tembu tribe in the town of Mvezo. After he died when I was nine years old, a new chief took me in as one of his own. I soon attended school at Clarkberry Boarding School when I was 16. I later attended West Lang College and studied for a Bachelor of Arts at the Fort Hare University. Now I understand you were a leader in the ANC's armed wing. What exactly did you do? Well, we sabotaged military and government targets and made plans for a guerrilla war if necessary. Eventually, we resorted to violence and bombed with civilian casualties and resistance to apartheid because no form of nonviolent protest had any effect. Tell me about what happened after you were released from Robben Island, the prison in which you were held. Yes, well, the state president, F.W. de Klerk, reversed the ban on the ANC and other apartheid causes. I made a speech stating that we would make peace, but we would continue to try to bring peace to the black majority and give them the ability to vote in national and local elections. When you were made president, what were some things that you wanted to accomplish? I wanted to stop the social and economical inequalities of South Africa. Some of which that were made was the connection of 3 million with telephone lines and placing 1.5 million children in schools. Also, homes were built and water accessibility was increased in millions. 
very impressive. You've been blah blah blah. Yep. One last question. Since your retirement, you have been active in the fight against AIDS. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, I've spoken at several places against AIDS and lent support to the stopping of it. My son died of AIDS in 2000. Thank you for your time. Now back to Andy in the studio. Thanks, James. Now word from our sponsor. Word. Yeah, I'm a web designer. This here's my doomsday bunker. I think there's a gator in here. Man, this guy's doomsday bunker is really awesome. Woo! I should take some of his ideas and make them my own. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I guess you want me to talk to you about the apartheid. You're gonna wanna get a pen and paper ready, cause you might wanna jot this down. Apartheid was a racial segregation system that was instituted by the National Party government. The National Party governments ruled South Africa from 1948 to 1994. Even though the population of South Africa was 75% black, the government was mainly white, which is what caused this racial segregation to happen. And that's all you need to know about apartheid. In Rwanda, there were two groups, the Hutus and the Tutsis. The Hutus were a small ethnic group that ate lots of fruit seeds. The Hutus were under control of the Tutsi king. But they still blame the Tutsis for everything. Originally, they were living in peace but certain actions caused that friendship to cease. From Belgium, independence they gained. The Hutus and Tutsis no longer under one reign. The year was 1962, when Rwanda was dominated by the Hutu. That same year, the Tutsis dominated Burundi. That was the name of the Tutsis' new country. However, the Tutsis technically controlled the Hutus. But that wasn't the choice the Hutus would choose. The Hutus rebelled in 1994 and left half a million Tutsis lying dead on the floor. The Rwandese Patriotic Front ended the slaughter. Now here's a silly picture of a really cute otter. Now back over to Ryan Plum. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I hope I didn't impress any record labels. I guess you're here to learn about the African economy. For the most part, African countries had to rely on one resource to stay alive. For example, Zaire relied on cobalt, Zambia relied on copper, Ghana relied on cocoa, and Sudan relied on cotton. In order to boost the economy, African countries produced oil. Fluctuation in prices caused a severe economic depression in Africa. The countries in Africa heavily relied on each other for support. African countries still suffered from the effects of colonial rule. Many plantations were unsustainable, and many lost soil fertility and money. I need you to help me! <sighs> Thanks, Ryan Plum. Any last words? Word Splash! Gaifus to order has to go! Now, I was thinking, governments in Africa aren't that different from other governments throughout the world. Africa has monarchies, such as Swaziland, in which the king has all the power. There are also some democracies in Africa. South Africa serves as the best example for other countries in Africa, even though it's called a republic, president elected by the people. Ghana also has a democracy. In Africa, there are many countries with democracies in which the government changes the constitution regularly, or the government bends a law. This type of government Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Kenya, and Burundi are all countries in Africa with flawed democracies. It's fun to stay at the 